Yesterday I posted a video saying that I was going to be writing a blog post on the topic of uh, the women of TikTok being shocked, shocked to learn that their men are always thinking about the Roman Empire or, you know, more accurately, uh, ancient Rome, because I think a lot of focus is on the transition from the Roman Republic to the Roman Emperor. I mean, that is the life of Julius Caesar. Uh, his, his successor, Octavian, was really the first emperor. Well, that blog post is written. It's not posted yet, but by the, by the time you see this video, it will be. Uh, it's, it's up in the composition window on Substack. I actually compose uh, everything these days in Google Docs, but you know, I cut and paste to Substack. But I still have to put in you know, links and images and whatnot, so it's not up yet, but by the time you see this video, it will be available. So go and check it out <laughs> and subscribe if you haven't already. Michael posted a comment saying that he doesn't think about the Roman Empire much, and he wonders if that makes him non-binary. <laughs> well, I'm sure you have some other fantasy realm that you escape to, Michael, <laughs> be it history or something else. But that whole notion of, you know, living part of our lives mentally someplace else reminded me of a 1972 science fiction novel by Thomas M. Dish. And it's called 334, and the 334 of the title has a double meaning. It is simultaneously the address of an apartment block where many of the main characters in the story live in modern-day New York City, and the <laughs> this is a novel from 1972 that makes Dish a contemporary of Philip K. Dick. But the story takes place in New York City in 2025, so <laughs> next year, and it is a story of, in, in Dish's own words, I think this was in the introduction of the copy that I had way back in the day, uh, that the novel is his idea of what the world would look like if things go reasonably well. And by that he means that there's not some right-wing takeover, there's not a nuclear war, you know, progress continues, both technological and social. And in the novel, the U.S. is, it's a welfare state. I mean, everybody gets food, shelter, and clothing, and education, and whatnot, but... Uh, if your scores are low, if you've got bad genes, whatever, you might be denied the opportunity to breed. Uh, and there is a character in the novel who's a high school student, and uh, that news has been broken to him, that he will not be allowed to breed unless he gets his grades up. <laughs> so he, he searches out extra credit in order to get those breeding privileges. Uh, in the novel, there is a huge disparity between professionals who are working and the mass of people who just subsist on welfare and who really don't have much to do and whose lives are pretty pretty empty, pretty meaningless. Um, contrast that with a character who is an academic. And in this book, there's a drug, I think it's called K. I just looked at the, uh, the Wikipedia entry for it and I didn't see the mention of the specific drug, but I think it's called K but just the letter K. And when you add it to coffee, you know, it gives your buzz a little something special and coffee with K in it is coffee with a K. It's K-O-F-F-E-E. -E. Um, and you can add it to other drugs. I forget the, the different combinations that DISH lists. But one of them, one option is just to take it by itself. If you just take it by itself, then you, and you do it regularly for a while, you develop a fantasy world. And if you don't do any sort of academic study about a particular period in history, then the fantasy life that you enter into, and you'll spend, you know, you'll pop back and forth between the real world and this fantasy life regularly throughout the day, regardless of whether or not you're actively taking the drug. You know, once, once the parallel is established, as far as I remember, I, I read this in the 80s, it's been a while. Uh, but one character is an academic, and in academic circles, a popular thing to do is study, intensively study, uh, a particular period in history and then when you start taking the drug, you pop into an alternate life in that historically informed fantasy realm. And this character is, I think she's a, like a PhD student or something. As I recall, she's um, going to be defending a thesis. But her specialty is ancient Rome. And so throughout the novel, and she's not a character in the whole novel, really. It's, it's a series of like vignettes and, and super short stories all strung together to make a novel. Uh, and in her story... I think that she is uh, working on a thesis, and I forget the exact drama in her, you know, her modern day life. Uh, maybe it's a struggle, you know, a deliberation over where to send her son to school, if that's the right 
it's all kind of mixed up. As I say, it's been a long time since I read it. But, you know, she's popping back and forth between her daily concerns in New York of 2025 uh, and ancient Rome. And so, you know, all this discussion of uh, young women on TikTok being surprised and aghast to learn that their, their boyfriends and husbands think about Rome all the time and they didn't know it. You know, it just brought this to mind. So anyway, 334 by Thomas M. Dish. Great book. If you haven't read anything by Dish, I would suggest starting with his, his classic, which is called Camp Concentration. Uh, Camp Concentration is a story about a, a secret government research laboratory where they're experimenting on prisoners, and they're giving them drugs that make them very, very smart, like creative geniuses with super high IQs, but at the same time, it causes physical deterioration. So as you're getting smart, your body is basically rotting out from under you. Uh, anyway, that, that is a fantastic novel. Highly recommend it. Also highly recommend 334. He's got another one called On Wings of Song, which I've always meant to, to read and just never got around to. But anyway, Thomas M. Dish, 334, Roman Empire, KMO's Substack blog. Check it out. All right, catch you later.